Warzone Ranked has been out for a little over two weeks now, and if you're anything like me, you are absolutely loving it. But you may have noticed as we've gotten out of bronze and silver, you might find a little bit of a slowdown or even a plateau of what your current skill rating is. As you guys know, it gets harder and harder. The higher the rank is, the more the deployment fee is to get into the match. And well, some of you might be struggling. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about some crucial tips that you need to know to get more SR to rock it through your ranks because I promise you so much of this is not down to gun skill even if you're a little bit you know more mechanically challenged or you don't have the hours to put in the reps you can play consistently and you can use some of the tips that I'm going to tell you because especially towards the end some of these might not exploit but definitely exploit a bull in terms of these are probably going to get patched so you might as well use some of these to get some free SR while you can if you guys enjoy these style of videos where I provide more value to your warzone gameplay and I don't just throw my own gameplay on the screen make sure you like and sub for more because I have so much warzone academy content I've got 16 videos over here ready to go and you're going to be seeing them non-stop first and foremost let's talk about a change that just went live a couple days ago Okay, so they have updated the way the placement system works. They've actually changed to be more generous to people who don't finish in the top five. So I tweeted about this over on Twitter. If you guys want to keep up to date on all things Warzone, basically from the top 40, you used to get five points. Now you get 10. Top 30, now you get 20. Top 20, now you get 30 points. Top 10, now you get 40. Top five, now you get 50. And then of course we get the same for 60, 80, and then 100. So obviously big picture here, it is so much more valuable to make it into the end game because you get such a large amount of SR. And we'll be talking about a lot of that today in terms of how to be more consistent about getting into the end game. But kills also matter to especially those end game kills. So a lot of people don't know where to find this. When you go into the main menu, just go into the main menu here. You can go into how to play. Press R1, R1, all the way up to the top. And then you press triangle for details. And this gives you the new up to date. So make sure you take a screenshot here. If you haven't already, I'll go ahead and get my face cam out of the way for you real quick. So that way, if you want to pull it up on your phone, you can use this, you know, maybe while you're in, you got to see like, oh, come on, man, if you get third place, we'll get X amount more. That's always a good thing to, you know, make call outs to your teammates while you're dead. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the ways you can consistently make the end game. So obviously the very most important part is you need a good team, okay? Going into solo queue rank is hell. You're not going to have a good time, especially as you get into higher deployment ranks. People are going to full send, go on their own, die, possibly leave. It's all, it, it's not fun, okay? If you're looking for people to play with, and you're looking for people who use the skills that you've learned in the Warzone Academy, okay? Now more than ever, the Warzone Academy Discord is up and alive and people are constantly looking for people to play with. So go to the pinned comment, open that up real quick, join that. And then next time you're on, you're like, ah, the homies aren't on, check that out. You can just go in there, you can separate versus North America, EU, other regions, be like, hey, I'm looking for someone in gold to play with. And you can find someone in there, try to find them to play with. Okay, so now that we have the stage set, Placement points are incredibly important. Making it to late game because late game kills are worth so much more is incredibly important. Now let's start to talk about how we can consistently make it to the end game using some of the strategies that I'm going to talk about. And then at the end, we're going to talk about some ways that you can get some little bonus SR here and there that's just going to add up like crazy. Okay, the very first way is you got to know when the fight is lost, man. I see so many people hard commit to trying to make these fights work and it just ruins their entire team's momentum. So we're kind of going back to the old red versus blue right here, but sniping is very common in this game. I know the Cronin Squall is pretty much meta right now, but sniping is still incredibly valuable. Pretty much every squad is going to have at least one sniper and then typically two ARs, okay? I recommend my go-to loadout right now is the MCPR and the Chimera, and then most people are rocking the Cronin Squall and the Vaznev or the Cronin Squall and the MP5, or maybe the Hemlock and the MP5, something like that. But typically, you have at least one sniper on the team. And what that sniper is oftentimes doing is looking for an opening as your team pushes in. They're going to look for someone that's peeking out of windows. They're going to look for someone that overextends. And then the other two are going to get active and get involved. And I see so many fights that are established this way, where you kind of have one person overlooking to make sure that no one's getting shot in transition. But it's so critical. This can go extremely well, okay? Someone could peek that window, you get the early knock, and then your team runs in, wipes everyone easy, right? Throw a couple drill charges in there, you're a great support. But if you're the player that's playing back, and you notice, oh crap, one of my players went down, and you start to push forward, and you notice the other one goes down as well, don't try to force it, don't try to be a hero, don't try to 1v3 that situation. It's better for your entire team to just realize, hey, it's chalked, I gotta get out of here. Get out of the fight, start working yourself for a revive, because the most important thing is getting your teammates back. If you hit that revive, they're all the way at the top of the skybox, and they can push in for a rotation to what? 
make sure we make it to the end game because the end game is where all the points are not that scrappy little ego fight that you were involved in if you are the player that's pushing in and you get downed and you know that your buddy is playing regain thirst yourself as quick as you can okay don't allow yourself to get interrogated which then will allow them to hunt down your teammate okay so no matter what make sure you are playing the regain okay so let's say we get into a situation where like all right we're playing the regain we know my teammates are dead and i have to go buy them back okay whether it's early game or it's late game the most important thing you can do is get that buy back okay so here's an early game example i was playing with joe and ethan i think they both had lost their gulags and i was still alive and i still had my gulag the team that had killed them started to ape me they were pushing me as fast as they possibly could i get one knock create space smoke in get the double res and then i can go in and fight my gulag while my teammates go in if i tried to ego that fight i'll end up costing my teammates to where then i have to win my gulag i lost half my money because i died and if i lose that gulag the game is over so make sure you're always i always say this you always fall sin for the homies i literally made that a, a, a one of my merch items always fall sin for the homies it matters so much more in ranked okay there's no prize in the amount of kills that you get at the end of every game all anyone cares about at the end of these games are plus or minus sr okay and the most likely way you're gonna get plus sr is to make it to the end game okay even when you are in the end game a suicide res is probably one of the most valuable things you can do so you'll see in this situation i'm playing with my buddy zach and lucky in a really sweaty iridescent top 250 lobby okay and we had just landed back in because zach rezzed us and me and lucky are sitting up on top of this roof there's a team in the second story of the building and there's a team in the first story of the building and there's a whole bunch of people around us and it's just it's just horrible i have no plates i only have a pistol there's no steady spot where i can get in get established and fight this out with zach and lucky and so what i end up doing is basically saying hey guys pop pop like just thirst yourself thirst yourself let's get out of here let me get the res i'm able to get this hero double res and they're able to float until the end and basically go from fifth place to, and a lot of times in these situations a guaranteed second place so make sure you are always playing for the regain especially late game man make sure you get that late game res which is one of the reasons why and i see so many people overlooking this okay the buy station the mobile buy station is like the most valuable piece of utility in the game right now if you have that stow it hold on to it i see people leaving it on the floor and it just blows my mind okay the mobile buy station is going to allow you to regain for your teammates. But let's say we don't need to regain for our teammates. Let's say we're in a good spot, power position totally set up, and you're getting ready for the fat, like the last final few fights. Throw that thing down, and a couple things are going to happen. One, enemy players might start shooting at it. Boom, you know where the enemy players are. Two, once it hits the ground, spend all your money. Buy your self revives. Make sure you get durable gas masks because durable gas masks are inside of it. Make sure you get self revives. Make sure you get UAVs, and more than probably more importantly, is going to be precisions which are going to clear people out of rooftops and out of windows so you can rotate more effectively. Keep your mobile buy stations. They're so incredibly important. Okay. And as I kind of alluded to there, another critical thing that we need to be doing, buy self-revive. I see people walking around with 12, 13, $14,000 and they're just holding onto it. Once they buy their loadout, they don't know what to do with their hands. Okay. I think a self-revive is more important than a UAV because basically everyone has ghosts in this map. Okay. The people that don't have ghosts, probably aren't the players you need to worry about because they're just going to be running around likely with gulag weapons or starter weapons they're not really going to be that much of a threat the players that are a threat they're already going to be ghosted because they already have their perks they already have their loadouts so what do we spend our money on self-revives every single buy station has two self-revives and that's going to allow you guys to create space when you're in the middle of a fight maybe you get headshot sniped you can you know three quarters self and then your buddy can come over and tap you and then boom you're back in the fight or maybe they knock you and your teammates have to push forward to create space and you can finish that self-revive but if you're down and you're completely out of that fight and all you're worth is pinging and complaining well you're kind of screwing yourself especially if you died with like twelve thousand dollars in your pocket so buy self-revives there's two in every buy but now there's also self-revive pistols there's two of those in every single buy that's in there because they remove the cluster mine so now even if two of your teammates get self-revives you can still buy the self-revive pistol which is not only good for yourself obviously you can't halfway tap it you have to fully commit to it and you can shoot and res your teammates with a self-revive pistol so make sure you're buying your self-revives i promise you it is going to help you reach the end game more than you think but in order to buy those self-revives oftentimes we need the momentum in the early game so let me talk you through a few things that you can do to get some early game cash 
Okay, so the very first thing that you can look at is you can look at this heat map here. This was provided by Call of Duty on their Instagram, and it shows where people are landing and where the hot drops are. So you might have the conversation with your team and realize that you've been dropping at a highly contested area. And in so many of these small parts of the map, there are places with cash registers. There's all those little mini markets that have like the shelves, like you were to go through like a, like a market. And all of those shelves are just lined with cash. And there's repeats of those buildings across the entire Almaz or map. And so make sure you find somewhere that you can drop and make sure you have that early game momentum. But there's also some cool stuff you can do. For example, there's this strat that I've started using where you pick up a most wanted. And then I go into police station and I just open up all of these weapon lockers. And it's just like every time I open up a weapon locker, it brings the most wanted count down down. Another thing you can do is grab a most wanted and obviously do this if you know that you're safe and you're feeling comfortable with your team around you. You can grab a most wanted, go hit a black side or a stronghold, and every time you kill a bot, it takes like 10 seconds off. So you just wipe all these bots, the most wanted counter goes down, and you get money for completing the most wanted contract. So you can pretty much instantaneously get a loadout at the very beginning of the map using that strategy. Of course, there's also all the cash spots across the map. You guys have seen this screenshot here before. If you have it, make sure you screenshot it. This could be a good opportunity for you guys to regain the cash spots are all across the map and are a great way for you guys to find, you know, maybe a little bit of cash. If you're, if you're seeing all these buildings with windows open, doors open as you're floating above trying to find a spot to regain, go check out one of these cash spots on the edge of the map. I doubt anyone has hit it, especially because most people in ranked are just hiding inside of buildings. So use that as your regain possibility. But all of that can be used to get the early game cash to start the momentum of getting our loadout, which is so important. That's probably the number one thing you need to do as your number one focus at the beginning of the game, okay? And it's not for the guns, it's for the perks. You have to get Ghost. Ghost is so valuable. Even if you're finding a perk package on the ground, I don't care what I will drop. If it has Ghost on it, I'm always going to grab it because UAVs are now unlimited. People can buy UAVs multiple times at any store, okay? There's no cap to it. There's 6,000 apiece, but anyone can buy it, okay? They're pretty common on the ground now because they got rid of bomb drones and cluster mines. So now UAVs are more common in the randomization of the loot pool. On top of that, they also added UAV towers, which are only $2,000, which is another way that people can find you. And of course, we have strongholds and black sites. Ghost is so dang important. Get your loadout all about what that early game momentum starts with. It's get the cash, get the loadout, get the self revive, play as a team and start to rotate early and get yourself set up in a power position. Because even if you're not getting a lot of early game kills, those late game kills and those late game placement points mean the world in terms of ranking up. Okay, so that wraps up the first portion of this video. And it's once again, big focus, get to the end game. How do we get to the end game? It's playing for the regain. It's playing for the res, getting our economy set up and making sure we play our life because the kills are worth so many more points at the end. And then the placement points are obviously invaluable as well. But what we're now going to talk about is some strategies to get some more SR skill rating while we're going through the mid game, early game, etc. with our team. If you guys have been watching any stream, you've likely heard the term like, let me get my taps, let me tap, do you guys get your taps? And what that means is you're trying to get at least one damage on an opponent. Okay, let me show why this is so dang important and you need to be doing this with your teammates, especially as you get higher up in ranks. Okay, when you get a kill with, for example, more than 20 squads left, you get five points. Even if you just hit someone one time, you get five points. But let's say you're going to clear out a building solo and you kill that guy and you down him and you thirst him all by yourself. You get five points, but your teammates only get two. Okay, and they may not seem like much of a difference. Three SR, what's that? But let's say, let's move it up a little bit. Okay, let's go to less than 20 squads left. You're only in the top 20. This is pretty easy. You guys, you know, can be consistently doing this if we're using academy strats that we talked about to make the regain end game. Now, you kill someone, you thirst them, you get seven points. Well, your teammates, they only get three. That's a difference of four. Okay, let's say that happens five times in a single map between you and your teammates and everyone, you know, kind of getting their own solo kills and thirsting them. That all of a sudden added up to 20 points. Now, let's say we did that for 10 games during your session. Maybe you guys had a weekend session. Holy crap. That just added up to 200 points. Now, let's say we do that over an entire month, we're talking thousands of SR lost because we're not doing the taps, okay? Now, a lot of people have been vocal about this and hoping that this gets changed, right? If you're playing with a team and anyone gets a kill, I think everyone should get the points. That's how I feel, right? I mean, it's, it's tough though, because, you know, you could also just be absolutely carrying somebody 
and they're not getting involved in any of the gunfights, but they're getting all the free SR. But at the same time, let's say one person is watching a right side of the flank and the other two are getting all the free kills on the left that you know are free kills, but you're the disciplined player watching the right flank, you're missing out on all this SR. So it, it's tough. I, I think they're going to have to find a way to balance it. But right now, until they make this change, you got to get your taps. Okay, don't throw it, right? Don't throw the gunfight. Make sure that you're actually being smart about this. Don't leave someone up so that way you're getting like live pinged while his teammates are coming to challenge you. If you need to throw someone, throw someone. But if you, let's say, have two people down and the last two left on a squad or you have a solo down and you know he's the last one, okay, let your buddies get their taps in, especially in the top, you know, final three situation. We're talking about a difference of eight SR, okay? Let your teammates get their taps in. If you want to, you can interrogate them and they can't, when someone's being interrogated, they can't hold circle to thirst themselves. So you can go up to them, you can interrogate them, and then you can also, it's really rude, you can interrogate them and you can hop off. You can interrogate them and you can hop off. You can interrogate them and you can hop off. And it'll allow you to buy enough time for your teammate to come in and get their taps so that way they get the kill and assist points rather than the kills by a squad mate point. But it doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen, okay? It's not just friendly taps. You can also get taps on your enemy's kills. If you're third partying and you see someone on the ground, you can thirst them and you will get points. Hey, don't, don't throw the team gunfight for this, but you can do it, okay? I've sniped, I've seen someone down across the map and I've thrown an airstrike at them that I know normally wouldn't benefit me, but I know that one, the less players that are left alive on a squad, the better. And two, I know I'm going to get free SR. Watch this clip right here. This, this guy isn't a threat to me. He was downed by someone else, but I'm throwing my airstrike at him and I get the SR. Yes, it helped me close out the end game. We ended up winning this game. Less players on each squad is good, but let's be honest. I just did it for the SR, okay? <laughs> but take your opportunities. Get a tap in. Even if it's not your down, it's not like a 2v2 kill race like the pros would play pros relatively speaking like the, the warzone competitors would play where they would have to let someone self revive and then they would kill them so that way they would get the kill all that matters is operator assist in this for the skill rate pointing okay so get your taps in even on your opponent's downs and they'll help you raise your sr okay and then the final one that's a little bit unique you can get your taps on someone else's gulag okay so they remove the gulag rocks from or they remove the rocks from the gulag they said it was rude and they're also supposed to remove the footsteps if you guys have been in the gulag and you've heard footsteps above you i know that's been a problem with literally every single new gulag it's like they need to like put a post-it note up on the wall or something because every gulag that they make there's footsteps above you for like the first three months and they fix it three months later so they keep chronically forgetting all that being said they remove the rocks that you can throw they also remove the footsteps but if you're in the gulag for a long time the first gulag that you spawn into you don't get rocks but if a new gulag round starts it gives you five rocks. So you can see in this clip here, I throw a rock at someone. They get one damage taken from me. They get ripped off the head glitch. And then I get free points because I did an assist on someone else's gulag. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the first of many, many Warzone Academy videos, okay? Right now, if you're finishing this video, make sure you like, okay? Press the screen. Press the little like button on the lower left-hand corner. Subscribe for more because we have so much coming. A lot of it, honestly, turn the notifications on. Some of the stuff will get patched. I know the developers watch my videos. So some things like the rock and the gulag, they're probably going to patch that. Make sure you're notified so you can take advantage of this stuff early, okay? And then, of course, join the Warzone Academy Discord. If you're looking for more people to play with who are using the similar-minded strategies of, hey, let me get my taps in. Let's rotate early. Let's get our self-revives on our early loadout. People know because they're in the academy and if you want to play with those people join the warzone academy discord you can search whether it's north america eu other regions pubs for dance I, <laughs> I wish i said for dance you can't search for dance boys i'm sorry ashika island dmz join the discord like the video and i'll catch you all live over on twitch peace